still up there. Uh, some people still haven't had showers, but we're all alright. Um, yeah, we've been there for about three and a half weeks, really, and the reason that we started the occupation was against university management plans to privatise uni services, um, a bit like what was going on at London Met earlier this year. Um, the management wanted to, well, they wanted to privatise services which would have affected 235 workers who would have faced, um, well, if the transfer goes through, they're going to face no protection on their wages, no protection on their pensions, and no protection against redundancies. There's been no guarantees made in, that, um, in those areas. So we see that it's actually quite, you know, it is quite a vicious assault, really, on workers' conditions and uh, the services that are provided for students. And one of the main things that we've been stressing is that how it affect, how it will not only, you know, when we've been talking to students to try and get them involved, we've been stressing it's going to affect the workers involved, but it's also going to affect our services. You know, we're going to be receiving services from private companies who effectively will be able to run a monopoly on campus and charge whatever prices they want to. Um, I think the first thing is that it's important to acknowledge that this is definitely part of a wider ideologi ideologically uh, driven marketisation of education. Um, the university management have still not given any economic justification for the, for the plans to privatise other, other than saying it will be more efficient. And, you know, I think this is definitely, you know, in the context of when we've got, you know, we've got the privatisation or the effect of privatisation of the secondary schools with the academies brought in by Michael Grove. Um, and we see that on a lot of campuses across um, Britain, you know, privatisation is a key issue and that it really is part of a sort of wider drive led by the Tory government to um, privatise and marketise education. And so in, the in light of this, I think that we definitely need national um, united action to defeat this. And we really need to work together and, you know, uh, show solidarity with each other in terms of fighting this, um, this national drive towards, you know, to, against education. And so one of the main things I'm going to be calling for is that we've got a demonstration on Thursday at one o'clock, which we do every Thursday. And it would be really good if everyone in this room can go back to their campuses or go back to their Swiss groups, whatever, and, you know, try and send a delegation or try and send some message of support um, to, for the demonstration on Thursday because I think that really sends a strong message, you know, because the management have really tried to portray the people in the, in the occupation as a bunch of, you know, mad lefties in a room who don't represent um, <coughs> the public opinion. Uh, and it would be really good to show that this is, more, this is sort of a national issue that is affecting lots of, issues, lots of universities and it's not just about the 235 workers at Sussex, it's really about uh, education on a national scale. Um, the second thing I wanted to just really mention briefly was the way in which we've sort of organised the campaign and the sort of successes we've had. And for me, the main successes have been the demonstrations that we've had now, I don't know, it must be about eight or nine demonstrations. Um, and it is interesting to note that the demonstration that started the occupation was actually, you know, we spontaneously decided to occupy. No real plans were made to do it. Um, the week before that demonstration that began the occupation, we had an organising meeting and only ten people showed up. Uh, for it, and so I think it really gives the impression that you know you have really got to seize the moment. And if you think, you know, if you think everyone here, you know, if they think there's a chance of occupying a building at uni, they should really go for it because these these kind of things, you know, they do start with um, with people, and you know, they start with de with a demonstration. You know, it just happened that on that day the demonstration was 200, and we felt confident about taking the conference centre, uh, you know, the university management conference centre, and we went for it, and it's it really it's really grown and grown. Uh, since then, and more people have been brought in. Um, however, you know the campaign has been fantastic, and you know there's been a lot of national press and stuff, and it's been really good about politicising campus and bringing new people into politics. But the one thing that for me that it's really highlighted is that actually, you know, a student movement without uh, united, without what action from the work from workers and without you know industrial action can actually be quite limited. Because at the moment, management tactic, management ta um, the tactic employed by management is to sort of ignore us and to try and let us fizzle out. You know, they've given us open access to the occupation, so I think they're really just trying to wait us out and try and uh, hope that it loses momentum before it begets, you know, and so they don't really have to deal with it. And one of the things that I'm really going to be pushing this week, and that, you know, we're all really trying to push this week, is to really escalate this week, both in terms of pushing um, staff members to get active in the unions and pushing, you know, the un staff to just the affected staff to um, push for strike action in their unions and also for an escalation in the tactics that we use. Because I think that is very important. 
you know, we've had a lot of debates about whether we should call a student strike or whether we should, you know, disrupt uh, lectures and so on by occupying more buildings. And, you know, I think we definitely should because I think it's crucial not only to um, put the pressure on management but also to show the staff affected that actually, you know, we are willing to disrupt the union. We are willing to cause, you know, chaos um, on their, you know, on their, for, uh, for their cause. And, that, you know, if we can really push for an escalation in tactics, then I think that it gives um, staff the confidence to... Uh, argue for more, um, more action on behalf, you know, in terms of industrial action and in terms of unions. So, um, yeah, that's. I think that is key. A, a key thing to remember here is that you know, student pro student protests and campaigns can be very effective um, in terms of the press and in terms of uh, raising political awareness. But really, what we definitely need is some solid action on behalf of the unions and you know, it's my best experience really of the whole occupation has been after a union organised meeting. We are um, speaking to about 50 or so of the 235 staff affected. And in the meeting they said the strike action hadn't been raised at all, but they all came out of the meeting and said, we really want to strike, you know, we're ready to strike now. Because, you know, the plans go through. If it goes through, the plans will happen in September. You know, people are looking at redundancies and uh, job cuts in September. So, as I said, um, any uh, delegations of solidarity or, or messages of solidarity for the demonstration on Thursday would be really useful and we'd be really grateful to receive them. And yeah, um, hopefully, you know, I know the press has been, there's been a lot in the press about us, but there really there's nothing special about Sussex. Like everyone here should be pushing, you know, I know privatisation and other issues, there's big issues on campuses that we can really, act, you know, be active about and organise about and, you know, occupy about. So I'd urge everyone to go back to their campuses um, and do the same, really. Thanks a lot.